Good evening, everyone. My name is Elizabeth, the Education Coordinator for Marlene's Market and Deli. Tonight's special guest that we have with us, and is always an honor, we have Lysia Alexander. She is an, a local animal communicator, and uh, she um, she's also um, going to be putting out a up and coming book and you can find more about that on her website i'll have that in in the uh, description information in this video but we thank each and every one of you for being here and interacting with us thank you so much lucia all right all I'll, right i'll take it away hi uh, so have you ever wondered what your animals are thinking right and haven't you ever wondered like what in the world do they need? You don't know what to do. Well, I decode animal behavior so that you have conditions that work. And I do that through animal communication. And the ways that I use animal communication to support people and animals is basically, I have three areas that I work in. One is wellness. So I look, I connect with an animal and we find out what's going on. What's their experience health and physical wise? I can also do a body scan. So actually start looking at all their parts of the body. And then the more recent thing I've done is I've gotten, I do a nutritional and supplement assessment. So we check in with, with the animal. Is this kind of thing working for them? Maybe it's good for their nutrition, but their stomach isn't doing well with it. So a really detailed kind of a thing. And of course, all of this is in conjunction with a veterinarian. I always ask that you always ch check things out with your vet and then, or bring sometimes the information that, that we get in a animal communication session, bring that to your veterinarian. Second thing is behavior. Well, and you know, behavior is, is a big deal, but what it comes down to is understanding what is an animal needing that they're not getting or what's triggering them. And, and it's, we often will we'll look at things and I'll say, okay, when was the last time the behavior happened? And then I'll check in with the animal, like well, what was going on for them when that behavior was happening? And thirdly, and this is my specialty, is working with senior end of life animals and you know, those last chapters and through the process of end of life and even after. So really working with finding out what's going on for the animal, what they need and want, supporting people to make closure. And then I also have attended a number of euthanasias as support for the people and the animals. Uh oh, let's see technology. <laughs> so I want to, before I even go further with this, just talk a little bit about communing and communication. All of us naturally commune. And I'm sure all of you have experienced those moments where if you have a cat, you're, you're laying down, the cat's on your chest, you're having this, the eye contact, and you're literally like one with the cat, one with the web of life, and you feel like so in the present, so much like you belong. Or those times, let's say you're going like on a walk with your dog, the off-leash walk, they're running around doing their thing. And then they, of their own free will and choice, choose to come back and walk side by side with you. No words said, and you feel like you're this one unit and you're navigating and you're just enjoying the moment. And I think communion is just a part of, of a way that we access that which is greater than us. And we do it so, I, for me, I feel like doing that with animals is like my top, one of my top ways of doing that. Communication is different. Um, you know, animals have lived on this earth for thousands of years. And we're the, as far as, as animals, we're like the last animal that's come on the scene. So they've been around a long time. And, and so, so we, they are an integral part of our lives. And early humans, I believe all of us have ancestry of, uh, that, that is of people who naturally communicate with animals. We needed to, to survive. Now, granted, we live in a completely different world and the animal, animal communication of today, like as a profession versus what you naturally probably in your own way are doing at home versus back in the day, those all look different, but I think it is a part of, of who we are as humans. And what I know that the communing is like heart and soul. Communication, absolutely foundation of heart and soul, but it, I have to engage my mental faculty so that I can translate what it is that is going back and forth. And, and it comes across on, on sense levels, like all the five physical senses and then the five energetic senses. So 
plus like physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. I mean, all those things. It's about really, really experiencing that and then being able to talk about it, being able to direct my questions to them and then receiving information back. And one of the, one of the questions I very often get in my work is, how did you get into this? Well, two years after my soulmate dog, Hinsa, and that's Hinsa right there, he, after, two years after he died, I was meditating one morning and he came to me in spirit, which was not unusual. You know, that's just kind of the kind of person I am. And he said, you need to do animal communication. I said, I don't do animal communication. People laughed. They said, well, you're doing it right now. But it, it was not even in my realm of reality that that was animal communication. And so, and, and literally he insisted. So, and he, and he said, write this down, write this down. So I wrote down a list of ways that it would support people and animals. And that ended up being my first flyer. And then I read a few books and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm totally doing this. And then I had, at the time I was studying um, earth medicine and a big part of it was called animal knowledge. And so I did like animal blends where I like became an animal and like was experiencing life as that animal. I did journeys with animals and I did vision quest with the theme of a particular animal. And I realized, yeah, I've been doing this. So I hung out my shingle and this is now what I do professionally. And and I know that there may be more that you would be interested in. I promise I'll let you know how you how you know how you can find out more if you like. And so as I you know moved moved in this in this um, path of animal communication, living with my own animals, you know Hinsa, my cats, um, and working for years with other animals, one of the bottom lines, like one of the the foundations of what this work is based on is that all behavior is communication. So no matter what your animal's doing, it's in response to something. And that's a way that they're expressing something. So I'll give you the, the example of years ago, I came home from work one day and Hinsa had tore up, torn up the couch. He like chewed right into it. I was not a happy camper. And I looked at him and he looked back at me with that knowing look. And I was like growling at him, you know, you know, in my human way, talking, you know, you did this and how good. And he kept just looking at me. And then the third time I just kind of like sent that, whatever, that my displeasure at him. He looked back and it's like, I clicked. And I just, I, and he, it's like, he showed me, you know, how like, like early in the week he had, let me know in a very gentlemanly fashion that the that the his needs weren't being met and these are this is an agreement that he and I had that I do certain things for him and he do certain things back and the certain things that he does back one of them was not to be destructive with with our property with my property well he let me know like a gentleman but I was preoccupied right we all get that way in our lives you know not not getting it so then he got a little more assertive then he got aggressive you know, and, and annoyingly so, in from my perspective, until he had to resort to a destructive behavior to get my attention, to let me know that I was not meeting my part of the agreement. And that's when I had like, I've had a few ahas like that, but that was the big one where it's like, aha, that is 100% on me. And I could not get angry at him at all because I wasn't coming through. And it, it doesn't make me bad. And it doesn't make him bad. It just means it's really important to understand he's not doing it to me. He's not doing it as a vengeance. He's not doing it to make life more difficult for me that basically they're just communicating in the only way they know how. And so one of the other things, you know, that, that goes along with this. So I want to give you some tips to better understand your animals. Of course, all behavior is communication. The other thing is animals in my book are people with fur, you know, feathers, scales, whatever, but they're not humans. And it's really important for me as a human being to understand what they as animals need, what they can and can't do. Because we as humans tend to, you know, expect animals, have expectations of them like they're people and expect them to understand things that they are not capable of understanding and then get really mad at them. Likewise, we will project on them human characteristics. You know, and, and so it's like, and, and so it can go either way where it's like, 
well, you know, they don't like, like in a more um, de deprivation sense, well, they're just an animal. They don't really need this thing, right? Yes, they do. Or, oh, they're just like me. They can, they can do these things. No, they can't. So it's very important to educate yourself and understand, you know, what your species can do. And so, for example, um, with dogs, dogs and humans evolve together. Dogs come from wolves, which are family pack, they're social creatures. And then they, they evolved with us and we became part of their social structure. So leaving dogs at home alone and then not giving them special time to really connect and play, that's, that's really not, they're not coded for that. And so, so that's an important thing to know. Another tip just for, for dog lovers, and most of you probably already know this, but amazingly how many people come to me with issue, behavior issues with dogs, and it's because their dogs don't know what's my job. What do I, what do I need to do? Because it, you could just, that's why I really am all about dog training, not because you should like control your dog so they can like do everything you say so you can be in charge all the time, but it's to teach them to do things that you can say, good job, you did that. Because some dogs are really smart. They can have a bunch of jobs and it's not enough. So you just need to know that your breed, what they need so that they, they have a job, they're doing it and you can positively reinforce them. And when you can positively reinforce them to do their job, dogs build like they, they just glow with confidence. And guess what? When they're confident and satisfied, they're a lot more cooperative. Now cats, the frontal lobes of cats, okay, so dog frontal lobes are a lot smaller than humans. Cat frontal lobes are a lot smaller than dogs. And what that means is that they don't have a filter. Like, like in terms of when they're, when they're triggered, they respond right away. So Temple Grandin in her book, Animal, um, Animals Make Us Human, talks about a, a, a mother and she, she cites some, somebody else who did research, but I got it from her book, um, a mom cat and a daughter cat. And they're sitting, looking out the patio door and they can't get out at that time. They're out indoor, outdoor cats. So they have their territory and they're very proud of it. And an interloper comes into the, the backyard and that mom goes like, crazy she can't get to that cat so she attack, attacks her daughter so it's really important to know that about cats and one of the ways that 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 plays out in our relationship with them is that cats do not learn through negative reinforcement and tell me anybody who has cats if that's not true they learn through positive reinforcement and it has to be right away because it's that they don't have the their brain doesn't have that that connection it has to be right away and I believe that they do respond to praise, but let's face it, they did not evolve to live in packs with humans. They're a lot more independent and our praise is not anywhere near as important to them as it is to the dogs. So food, you know, you get, you really can reinforce things with food and imagery, you know, and we'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. So, so that's just like one thing you can do is just educate yourself about your animal. And I, I will let you know, when I first had animals, I was so dumb, you know, I'm just gonna say, I don't know what the right word is. It's like, ah, I can't believe I didn't read a ton of books. I did made so many mistakes. And then at some point I started learning, they, they taught me and then I started to research it. And that made it, it, it really helped a lot because then I was able to, to really consciously, you know, understand why the things that were happening between us were happening and make those changes that would direct them, you know, to have the behaviors that would be more um, compatible with living in a house with me. All right. I, I always tell people is talk to your animals and probably most of you are thinking, well, I'm already doing that. Yay. But this is with a specific purpose. It's, it's to let them know when, like when to keep them in the loop. And when you talk to them, you, know, you just talk to them about what's going on, but but anytime there's any change, let them know. Um, let them know things are changing, how and when. So I'm just going to run through some examples. You're having some remodeling. You're having visitors from out of town come stay with you. You have a new relationship and relationship is ending. 
you have a new job. And certainly if you're moving, you're going out of town. All those things are really, really important to let them know. Then let them know what you're doing and why. So if you're, you know, oh, I'm going to work. Oh, and the one I, the example I always like to give is like, if you're going to a yoga class, you can say, hey, I'm going to a yoga class. So I'm going to, you know, do a little aside here. And how do you, when you talk to them, you're not just using words. I mean, you, you maybe you're just using words, but I recommend engaging all your senses. You know, like, for example, I'm going to yoga. So give them the picture of yoga. Give them the how it feels for you. Um, uh, emotionally and physically so that they know. And then when you come back, they, they're going to smell the endorphins on you. They're going to tell how how happy or or up or or positive you're feeling. And they love to know that's what you're doing when you come back. They, 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 they kind of get the story and you could even tell them about it. They like, especially dogs, but cats too. Cats for maybe a different reason because cats are really averse to, adverse to change. And if they know things are coming, they feel like, okay, I can prepare myself even though then I'm not gonna like it. With dogs, they just like wanna know, they just wanna be part of things. And then, this comes a little bit more to what I was talking about in terms of, of behavior. Let them know what you expect and want from them and always use positive affirmation. So, you know, you have the, the cat that sprays and you're like, oh, that's Garnet. He's the one that's always spraying. He doesn't use the litter box. Well, or, or even when you're telling him, it's like, don't use the litter box. And you know, like you just think, you know, I need you to stop using the litter box. And what, is in your mind when you're saying that. I mean, not litter box, I'm sorry. Stop spraying on, on, on the counter, you know. Um, what, what the image they, that they're gonna get is the image that's in your mind. And when you're saying stop doing something, the doing something is what is the picture in your mind, right? When I say stop spraying on the counter, I'm seeing him spraying on the counter. So we actually reinforce it in some ways. So this is very counterintuitive, but I really recommend that you don't negatively reinforce. You know, if they do the behavior, you ignore it, and then you direct them towards the positive behavior. Now, if they're in the middle of doing it, no, you don't ignore it then. You know, it's like, no, you know, you, you definitely set the boundary. So that that what you what you do is like what I recommend for certain behaviors. And 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 if they're real problem behaviors, this this technique probably won't work. There's going to probably need more intervention than that. But just, you know, for like more on the surface kind of things is just give them the imagery over and over. It's like, oh, like, like, if, like, for example, if, if the cat's outside spraying and they're an indoor outdoor cat and, and, and I know, I know Debbie, you know about this, but, um, but you see them out there spraying, you're like, you send them like, oh gosh, look at you. Good guy. You're like marking the territory. You're such a good cat. You're doing your job house is mine, not your job. That's a great job. This is mine. And you claim because animals understand claiming territory. Like this is my territory. That's yours. But whatever the behavior is literally like, like if they have behavior that you want to move them toward three times a day, just like say, just say, Oh, such a, this is what, what, what I'm, I'm really wanting you to do. And you send images of really positive, like I say, flood flood them with that positive emotion with that image of the desired behavior and even possibly the image of getting a snack of course and then whenever they do it you you definitely positively reward them but the other thing is also how you refer to them so you say oh this is garnet he's such a wonderful cat he's really working on exclusively doing his stuff in the litter box and again the same thing the picture such a good guy he's doing that like when he's there and telling him and when you talk to other people about him he's gonna it's gonna it could take weeks for them to start getting on board but it's gonna start they're gonna start getting that if that's all they're getting from you and they're not getting the negative reinforcement they're gonna start going in that direction you know, this is, again, this is not like a formula, like you, you plug it in and you get like two and two equals four. This is a process. It's one that will lead you to the desired behaviors, but it will certainly improve your relationship with your animals, if nothing else. So let me tell you a story about Marlo. So Marlo lived with her, her human person and, and, the, and her two sons. And then when the sons left, Marlo got kind of depressed and was a little bit anxious 
you know, when, when her person would leave, she would be alone. And so she started developing separation anxiety. Well, her person got anxious about her dog being anxious. So she ended up, um, she ended up like leaving that, like sneaking out of the house. Well, that made it only worse. And then she went away, didn't let the dog know she was going to go away. The house sitter showed up. And when she got back, the house sitter said, I don't know. I've never had this happen with Marla. She wouldn't even take any treats. So the, the person brought Marlo to the vet. The vet checked her out, said, you know, she's, a, she's an old dog. She's got a little bit of hearing and vision impairment, but she's in really good shape. So the, her mom, you know, her human got kind of worried. So that's when she turned to animal communication. And it turned out that what would happen sometimes is that Marlo would wake up and she would like be a little fuzzy and disoriented and nobody was around. And that was in the, you know, more in the recent past, there were like bunches of the the kids were around, the mom were around, you know, I mean, sure they went play, but there was this kind of different energy. And she got, she just started, uh, you know, building on how the anxiety kept building and building. So the strategy we applied was, was to start with letting her know what she's doing, you know, what I just suggested, um, you know, when things are changing, when she's going somewhere, when, she, when she's going to be come back. Um, then she was, you know, telling Marlo a little bit more what to expect. And it took a few weeks, but Marlo started getting it. And then what her person started doing also was um, if she was going to be delayed, she would send her what I call a thought email and say, hey, Marlo, I'm going to be, it's going to be another couple of hours. And I don't know how dogs know, or cats know time. I don't think they know it in terms of hours, but they know what hour, that, like we have a, a body feeling of what time is. So I think they pick up on that kind of increment, but but they somehow seem to know. So um, so that's what happened. And Marlo settled down. She began to understand how that works. And now once in a while, you know, when her, her person's out and about, she will send her a little thought email just to say, thinking of you, love you. And boy, does Marlo love that. So these are all things you can do just, you know, right now. So, so far we have the idea that all behavior is communication, that um, talking to your animals, no. understanding this, the species that they are so that you really have a, a realistic perspective. And then the, this last tip I'm gonna give you is to take charge of your feelings. We, you know, we, we forget that when we live with others, whether they're humans or animals, we've got feelings flying all over the place. And animals don't have the same cognitive abilities that we do to be able to say, well, that's not really my stuff. And I don't know, some of you, and certainly me, I pick up on other people's stuff too, their emotions, and I have to remind myself, oh, that's not mine, okay. And so the same strategy and literally the same physical gestures that I use to help separate myself from when I'm taking on other people's stuff is something that you can use with your animals. So let's say you've come home from work and like you're agitated and your dog comes up to greet you and you're like, like, like let's say you're really angry. You can, you can find that place inside your soul and say, you know, let your dog know, I am really angry and it has nothing to do with you. And I love you and I'm taking care of you and finding that place in your heart in the turmoil of all your feelings, I, I think most people who live in love with, who live with and love animals, that place is pretty accessible. And just you send them a little beam, hey, I, I love you, but I got this stuff going on. And the gesture I use is, okay, I got all this stuff going on. I'm scooping up my stuff and then I'm bringing it in. This is mine. And, and you could say, this is mine. It's not, you don't have to fix this. You don't have to do anything. This is mine. Now, what I have found when I started doing that, then that gave my animals the freedom to come to me and lend their support and give me that emotional support that I so really want. And, I, and, and forget that if I, when I bless it and they're like there and they're really worried about me, that doesn't really help me or them. But when I take care of my feelings and what, when you do this and you, and you say, I've got this, 
then it means you do have this and you do need to take care of it. So whatever it is, whether it's journaling or talking to a therapist or talking, venting to a friend or working out, you know, whatever your way, you know, or having doing some grief work, you know, whatever's going on that you, you do your part. But what's amazing is when you do and you give them the freedom, they are so there for you without taking it on. Because when they start taking on our stuff, it stresses them out. It will, it can cause behavior issues and it can cause health issues. And, and there's no reason to do that. So that's um, the, the, the third tip I have for you. Now, today we're doing something different and special. I'm going to do a little bit of animal energy work, but before we do that, oh, before we do that, I want to give you the example of, of, a, of a, somebody I've worked with where this was, was really kind of really delightful to to get this little message from a couple that I worked with and they started doing this you know taking charge of their feelings and doing all that and I got a call from the woman and she told me um she said you know she and her husband were fighting and it was one of the their bigger fights and she just you know went into the other room and there was her cat kind of like ah you know and she paused she remembered what we had talked about she sent him the beam. I love you. I'm, I'm taking care of you. This is, this is ours. We're, we're taking care of this. She said, this is ours. And she really, you know, she just was able to do that. And the cat, she said, almost like shook himself, went out the cat door and then started just lounged in the sun, completely relaxed. But it was really kind of like his eyes were big and he was like, like puffy a little bit, like uh, stressed out. So, you know, even something as simple as that, it, it can go a long way, again, in helping you to have that harmonious, loving relationship with your animals. So before we move on to the energy work, first, I just wanted to thank you all for coming today and supporting me and for supporting Marlene's, which does such a beautiful job of providing great products for our local community, as well as providing incredible um, education, health education for now internationally because of, of the Zoom thing. And so, um, and thank you for caring enough for your animals and yourself to want to, to nurture, nurture that relationship. So, and as a way of thanking you, um, this is a way that if you are interested in what I've been talking about, you can learn more. Um, first, I'd like to just um, offer everybody a little um, Caring for Your Animals autumn tips that I, I, I'd send you. And, um, and also, I'll be offering like four discovery sessions, which are like understanding your animals, little sessions where um, it's like 30 minutes over the phone, complimentary. And what we do is we talk about the... the um, the issues, the main issues you're experiencing with your animals. And then we see if it's a fit for us to work together. And so if you're interested in that, put all that in the chat. Let me know that, yes, I want the, the tips. And yes, I would like the um, application for the understanding your animal session. So if you want to go ahead and put that in, um, um, Elizabeth, thank you. You'll, she'll take care of that for us. So um, I'll, I'll give you a minute to do that while I talk about energy healing. So there's lots of different modalities of energy healing. So I started out coming into my work with animals, already having some experience with working with gemstones. So there's a lot of different ways we can use gemstones for a lot of different things. And that's, that's one form of energy healing. Another one is that I studied healing touch for animals. Um, so I'm a certified practitioner and that's a whole body of work. And what you see me doing there some years ago is doing um, a chakra balance um, on, on Garnet, the cat. And more recently, um, the last number of years, I've also been working with sound healing. So, you know, using sound to activate crystals, using sound to find what the vital tone for an animal is that will actually help activate that the healing in their, all their cells in their entire body. So, so things like that, all of these modalities. And I still find this in some ways amazing, in some ways not um, they can all be done at a distance, just like animal communication. It's like whether we're three feet away, the communication isn't happening with my voice. It's happening on like non-physical energy levels, which move really fast, you know, like, like that. So um, we've got that, um, that, that can, that's something that we can do. 
Now for tonight, one of the ways that I'd like you to prepare for the, the healing is to let your animals know that you would like them to participate, invite them to be part of this and let them know um, why you want them to do that. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna do a simple clearing. We're gonna do a little chakra balancing and we're gonna be doing like a little containing or grounding. So those are the three, three things we're gonna do. And I'm gonna use um, like energy um, processes as well as gemstones for tonight's healing. And what would help, like what I would do in, in any kind of, like when I, when I have small groups that I work with, we do energy healing kinds of things, or when I do individual is that we actually have each, each animal, we know who they, their name, their age, who and what they are. And since you're all on here, that would actually help to open up the, the, like the, the, the space to directly work with your animal. And those people who are, um, watching this but aren't on the zoom on this zoom thing we're just going to open it up that if you request that some of that will spill over onto your animals and here's the other thing what i learned in healing touch for animals is that that all healing touch for animals uh techniques can be used on humans now healing touch for humans not all the techniques can be used on animals and i also learned how to do distance work we can use a surrogate, like a stuffed animal, we can use another animal, or we can use our own human body. So, so to, I would invite you also to just allow yourself to receive some of the healing when we do this. So what would be helpful now is that if that each person who's on this meeting, if you could ideally show me your animal, and if that's not easy, then just tell me about them. Tell me their name, their gender, their age. And if I can't see them a little bit, like their species, of course, like, well, it's like a gray tabby, you know, kind of thing, long hair tabby or whatever. And if you can show me, great. If not, then just tell me, but we're going to go through each, each person so that we can invite, because the energies that come in for healing aren't me, there are some other energies, and we want those energies to, to know where are we directing this healing work. So, um, yeah. Uh, if we can do uh, a screen share, like for our, um, gallery with everybody. Elizabeth, are you able to do that for us? Um, I, um, I mentioned earlier that, well, what I could do is I could remove the spotlight and then. That'd be great. Yeah. Um, just yeah. as long as everyone is comfortable with showing their, their, uh, cameras, because this will be later on YouTube. So if you're not comfortable showing your camera, shut your camera off and just tell me about your animal. And who would like to start? And is it okay if we do it so that everybody's on screen? Is that all right? Um, we would have to stop the screen share. Oh, we would? Yes. Yeah, yeah we, can, we can stop the screen share and then come back on. Okay, perfect. As, we, as I said, technology. Exactly. A blessing and a curse. Uh, technology and yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I I just had my cat hop up. I just gotta get everything readjusted here. I, mean, I don't know if you can hear my kitty in the background. I have two sibling, siblings, a girl cat, and they're a year old, and they're in training to be my helpers. They're just too young. They come in here and they start like making trouble. So I can't let them in for this today. Otherwise, <laughs> they will be the surrogates 
um, and I did test run this on them the other day and they loved it, but I, they're not trustworthy at this point to, to not just start getting very interested in the, the multiple things, you know, I have in here for all the work I do. So, okay. Are we ready? To gallery people? Um, you would have to stop uh, your PowerPoint. Oh, oh, I have to stop first. Yes, correct. And then everyone will oh, be able perfect. to pop Thank up. So here we are. Okay. Um, so we have 11 people and then we only have six showing. So, um, oh no, that's, that's, we have yeah. six and 11. There we showing. go. Okay, so if we would just one at a time, introduce your animal um, and just tell me a little bit about them. Um, well, I'll, I'll go first. This is Ziggy. And um, she picked me. Um, she was a little black kitten wandering um, my old el elementary school. And I was uh, doing a nighttime photography photo shoot for uh, high school. And here she came running up to me and was zigzagging all over the, the mm -hmm. playground. And so I named her Ziggy. <laughs> and she's 14 Ooh. and I've had her ever since she was a kitten and she's one of the most lovable cats ever she has the loudest purr of yours and as you can tell she's a little lover <laughs> yes indeed thank you Elizabeth who'd like to go next we can go oh, okay go ahead okay sure uh, so this is Clover. Clover is a dog. <laughs> she's uh, an all-American breed, meaning a mutt, and she's uh, probably 15 and a half years old. I've known her since she was probably about three months old. Um, and yeah, so I, I've been with her for about 15 years. And um, Selena's been with her for about four and a half years, almost five years. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. And who would like oh, to go next? I'll go. Um, I don't have them with me because they're napping with daddy currently. Uh, and I didn't know we were going to do this. Um, but I've got Pero, El Pero Blanco, and Amiga. El Pero is a, a, a Parsons Terrier, and Amiga is a Minpin Chihuahua. <laughs> so. And so, they're, can you tell me their colors? Uh, El Pero Blanco is white. Of course. And Amiga is brown. Okay. And how old are they? Uh, there are like six and five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Debbie? You froze. So, Debbie, what we're going to do is we're going to go with Lynn, and then hopefully you'll come back and be able to um, to share about your kitty. So, hi, I'm Lynn. This is Muzzle. Okay, there we go. Muzzle Tov. He's a dog. He's a giant party schnoodle. He will be six on Thursday. <laughs> and I've had him since he was um, nine weeks old. He is um, my therapy dog and um, my partner in life. He's a good boy. Oh, he's going to rest his head. Okay. You can go down Are you tired? What else did you need to know, Lessa? I think that's it. You know, and, and I happen to know him. I've met him. So it mm -hmm. makes it a lot easier for me to say hi, you know, like to kind of get an idea of who, who that is. So, yeah. so what we're going to do next is we're going to go back to screen sharing so that you have your privacy. And um, let's see, how does that work? Oh, there we go. And we're going to, um, we are going to do our group energy healing. And I'm going to be, this is going to be a little, um, I'm going to use a stuffed animal for this today. And, and I'm just, um, well, 
I'll try not to talk too much, but I will say a little bit of what I'm doing. And I'll, and actually, why don't we take a minute to just, everybody just kind of get very comfortable and relaxed. <sighs> and take three deep breaths. And then I always like to start with asking that um, I request that the, the bigger energies, the healing energies come and, um, and the way I say it is that my guides and all the, the animals that are joining us today, that their guides, their human, pe their human peoples, their guides and their territory guides. So whoever are the beings that whose domain is those kinds of things to please come forward. And then I also ask that any um, energies whose domain is anything that is pertinent to your animal's best and highest good that they also come in because we don't know what they need and that only that which is for everyone who's included in this healing today for everyone's best and highest good that only that which is for everyone's best and highest good may come to pass today so we're going to work as a group with our group energies and then and then everyone will receive so if you could just get to a nice Relax, quiet kind of space. And I think I'll, I'll, I'll share with you what I'm going to do first. So I'm not explaining techniques, rather just telling you what we're doing. So the first thing I'm going to use is a little wand with a Herkimer diamond on it. And that's going to, we're going to do something called like, like, like um, these these passes over their body and their energy field to clear them. Then I'm gonna go through each chakra with two gemstones on here, a light green aventurine, that's very healing and a rose quartz. So one for, for body, one for heart. And then finally, I'm gonna use a, a piece of petrified wood to help uh, ground their four paws and ground from their um, fifth, throat chakra down into the earth, down their legs, and then on their last chakra. But I'll share a little bit of that as I do it. And then just notice, you know, how your animals are, are doing when we do this. All right. So I'm feeling some stress releasing and some feelings of sadness. Just clearing that out. Sensing that some of the energy fields have a little bit of congestion. So we're clearing that out as well. And this, our little stuffed animal is gonna sort of, I'm gonna see the imagery around the animal here to show us what's going on. So I'm starting to see the energy field start to light up a little bit. And animals' energy fields are about 10 times bigger 
than they are. So they're quite a bit bigger than human energy fields. And of course, as animals, they, they need that, they, to have that instinctual perception of, of what's around. There, excellent, we're starting to clear now, that's good. So there's some little congestion in the head. So we may be picking up on several animals or, or um, that are having similar congestion. There we go. Now, energy healing sessions could be anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes usually, but we're gonna do a little bit of an abridged version. Um, we did get a good amount of clearing. So if you're just coming in, um, just try to move in with the energy that we're, we've got going. So now I'm actually um, taking this wand with the green of entry and the rose quartz sphere and asking these gemstones to support the clearing and nourishing of the chakras. So we start with chakra one at the base of the spine where the tail connects. Okay, and we're going to go to chakra two. And now chakra three. I'm picking up maybe a couple of critters, their stomachs are settling a little bit. Nice, okay. And with animals, we don't go to the fourth chakra, we go up to the fifth so that we're, we're in, you know, we're doing that straight line up. We're going to their throat chakra.
And then we go to the fourth chakra, which is right here on their chest. So my, what I, my noticing is that the first few chakras were a little bit more stuck. There's a little bit more energy moving now. Went up to the sixth. A little bit more congestion here. There we go. And to the, the crown. Nice job, everyone. So what we're going to do, we're just going to do it like a little xylophone. We're going to go from snout to tail, snout, tail to snout, just going to go up and down a few times just to really move and connect and everybody. Yeah, I know. And then we always end up going out the tail. There we go. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by um, I'm going to put a little uh, petrified wood, which is very grounding, and, and it can help integrate what we just did, help kind of contain it on, on the right rear paw, ground that down. And there's a cat, I don't know, there's a cat right now I'm sensing that's really liking this, one of the cats is really liking And then to the left. And to the right front. And to the left front. And I'm going to go to the, the root here, and we're going to have the energy go down both the legs down into the earth. So we're really grounding. Now there's a dog that's liking this. <laughs>
And then I'm going to go to throat chakra, do the same thing where it's going to, we're going to put it on the throat chakra here and it's going to go down both the legs and ground into the earth. It's grounding this alignment that they now have. Okay, so that's our energy healing. And whenever I have uh, sessions with animals, and I usually do animal communication with some energy healing, we I try to get, you know, if that we have time, I, I usually get that in as well. I always end the session by saying, um, by thanking each of the animals for their participation and for the animals and the humans for the work they're doing on the human animal bond, because for me, that makes me a better person. And I think better people make a better world. So I thank you for that. And then I always like to dedicate this work that we do to the well being of all beings in all realms, including ourselves. So that wraps up our energy work. And I know we're, we're kind of a little bit over time. And, but I wondered, um, Elizabeth, can we go over or do we need to wrap up? Um, we can um, have a couple uh, more minutes. Um, I think, um, you know, if folks got questions, um, and this is um, invaluable information. So I don't mind at all. Okay. So, so this slide, I'm just going to joke, said this slide is like, does anybody have any comments or want to share? And the next slide is my question and answer slide, but we can, we can just mush it all together. And, you know, if you have any questions or you have any comments, or you just want to share what you experienced or what you observed, um, and would like some feedback, you know, please go right ahead. Anybody? Well, uh, well yeah. <clears throat> I watched Muzzy go from sternal when you started to flat on his side. And then when, as you said, the one of the front paws, I think it was the, I can't remember whether it was right or left, his feet were, were moving. <laughs> So it was pretty interesting and he's sound, I mean, he's just super relaxed now. And um, yeah, it was interesting watching that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, that's great confirmation. Yeah, it, it works. Anybody else? Um, well, I was wondering with Clover, um, when you said one of the dogs is really liking that grounding of the back legs, she's been so wobbly the last several months and it's just more and more so. And so, um, yeah, I just, I, it, it made me wonder if she was, you know, feeling like, oh, this will, this will help me be a little less wobbly. <laughs> well, in that, as along with the the liking it, there was a sense that this this whoever was saying that had some some hip issues, like maybe some hip discomfort, you know, yeah. or some dysplasia or something. I don't know, but there was just a sense that there's some hip issue, and this is helping to to ground it down. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Thank Hopefully, you. that will help her. Yeah, thank you, Erin. I think you had something. There we go. <laughs> I was just curious why, um, well, like I trust you, but why why do we skip the fourth chakra and then go back to it? Because um, because this way, if we were like, we would be, so like, if you look at this, it's like, if we, we did one, two, three, then we'd end up going here mm -hmm. and then going back. Back up, this okay. Way, and this is what I learned through Healing Touch for Animals, but it just makes sense. You go all the way up to the neck, then, then, then you circle the back chest, down. Okay. Then you go up the front. So this is the back and these are the, the front ones. That's that's why. Yeah. Okay. Question. Yeah. Thank you. Um earlier when I started um advertising, 
prepping for this class. Um, Ziggy stayed with me the whole time. And um, and then um, she she was just, she knew that this was happening. And um, I know that she in the past would tune in right when we were starting, but it was like, she was like, I'm here um, prepared and <laughs> ready to connect. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. And she was so like looking at the screen, that was quite impressive. All right, I'm just gonna, I, I like this slide. So I'm just gonna have this. Um, any other questions, anybody? Okay, so um, thank you so much for, for coming today. This is really, um, I really appreciate it. It's just really nice to share with other people who really love animals. And um, I always say that, you know, I wish you all the wonderful benefits of your, the pleasure of sharing your life with the animals. And I, and I always say, keep listening and talking to your animals and be part of the healing, because I really feel like, you know, whether we're doing it, we're being kind to other people or kind to animals, but animals, animals bring something up in us. You know, they can touch us in ways that others can't. And there's just something so powerful about that. And I think that having that kind of heart just, just makes the world a better place. So thank you for, for that. And, um, and, um, I'll, if you, if you um, sign up for any of this stuff, I'll keep you posted when my book comes out. It's called Animal Poetry and Other Messages from Animals. Volume one is Mammals and One Bird. So I'll keep you posted. Get in there. So I think we're going to call it good for tonight. Thank you so much. You Thank you. Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. You made this class wonderful for being here. Thank you for being you. And um, stay tuned for her book. I know I'm really excited. And um, hopefully everyone got the um, her website um, if you have any further questions. And um, stay tuned for more. Also, just to let you know, um, we have all of the classes through the rest of the year, uh, the um, free wellness um, education classes and the rest of the paid um, classes. Uh, we have um, a couple of great cooking classes and also a art therapy class on um, holiday gift bookmaking. So you can uh, give it as uh, give the class as a gift, or you can learn how to DIY your own book um, to uh, give uh, to your family and friends and loved ones. So um, lots of really great goodness for the rest of the year and. Um, really excited to work with you more, Lesia, for the 2023 calendar. We'll be in touch. <laughs> Yay! Sounds good. Take care, everybody. Bye, everyone.